Long ago have I forgotten the day. I alone face what remains of my living days. Mine only solace is passing the days. A strangeling becomes a changeling, a masquerade amended by Luna's success. Firstly, I was a man, properly a gentleman. <laughs> Plagued by ice and ferocious gales, the sea became a turgid sludge that stretched in all directions. We feared rheumatism and every other unholy terror the cold could wreak on a body. Only the vigorous countenance of the captain anchored us against the contests of those bitter scenes. Should we stagger, the captain would holler. Great men are torn suckling from their mother's teeth. Lions are nursed on the milk of men. The sky shook, the captain gummed his blade, the lights dimmed. Captain ate only living eels and twitching scaly things, all the while chanting, eat of life, not of the charity of death. Life shall eat life, death shall eat death. Captain slept beneath a great shimmering blanket of salt water. He would make strangely beautiful proclamations. I've shed the fur and pity of the mammal's brain, exposed the core, ichthyosapien, it's most suitable. May 5, we make landfall. He was all forehead and whiskers. Below the trunk, he became all fins and scales. Our feet tasted the black sand with each step. Boom. The salt water glued the sand to our skin. Boom. Boom. We were made of ashes. Boom. Throw your partner. Boom. 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 For fatigue, we'd fetch barrels of root extract.
I woke on the shore. Blackbirds circled at the azimuth. They were unlike any I had seen before. Under cover of night, they'd come upon the nest of an unassuming fowl and lay eggs within. When the chick is hatched, the poor surrogate becomes kin to the gray-black thing. When he came of age, this serpent of the air would reward his caregiver with a most brutal deed. Searching for the crew, I saw neither withered hide nor crooked hair. I saw only a blaze of mirage. It was then that I saw the terrible fate of my crewmates. I wept for them. Lo, an archangel with ears like those mighty pachyderms came to soothe me. Those ears. He had heard my sorrow from the heavens. He spoke to me and said, There, there now. Do not be afraid. Slowly, sourly, and with a terrific pounding in my ears, I came upon a light that drew me to a partition on what was formerly black vastness. In obtuse coincidence, the cowlick with which my mother contended in my youth returned. I came to a wood wherein I found an aging hermit. I laid my new dugout on a verdant little waterway, tied my bindle to a stick, and set off. The river rolled against my makeshift craft. I brought with me began to rot in the thick, stifled moisture. My dry goods turned to clay and fermented a one-man mutiny. Crestfallen, with shadowy conjured beasts in my eyes, I felt the narcotic breath of God himself on my shoulders.
All at once, the unending wood gave a great shudder, and colored men came to my aid. The Hottentots prepared a feast, gave me salves for the rude pollution done to my body. I was presented with what I assumed to be a mate. Their idea of courtship would flush the cheek of even the most amorous libertine. <laughs> 